welcome i'm krista gibson this is keeping it real which is a feature of newspiritjournal.com and we are visiting with eagle song gardener who has over 40 years experience working and living and growing herbs and doing all things herb um, and she has just a tremendous amount of knowledge that she is sharing with us here in an eight-part series and this week she's going to be talking about marshmallow and of course I will have to make a joke about needing to get a cup of hot cocoa before we talk about marshmallow so I have a feeling that the marshmallow she's talking about is probably a little different from those little white cube things but anyway we'll see you there let's go over and visit with Eagle Song and let's learn all things marshmallow Hey, just wanted to let you know we had a few Skype issues again, um, so it didn't happen very often, just a couple of times, and we just powered on, so thanks for your patience. Hello, everybody. I made it over here to Eagle Songs, and um, I did make a joke that I, that I would have to say that I brought my hot chocolate with me because we're going to talk about marshmallow, and <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think those are the marshmallows you're talking about, so... <laughs> Hi, Eagle Song. Hi, Krista. It's really true, and I have to tell you, I um, marshmallow makes me think of hot, hot chocolate as well. So, yes. no, yes. today we're talking about the plant marshmallow. Okay. Marshmallow, uh, botanical name Althea officinalis. This is a plant that is a rich um, history in herbalism, but has fallen out of favor until recently. She's um, started to come back as a familiar again because people have realized how important this idea of the mucilage is mm -hmm. in the well-being of our bodies. Mm -hmm. So as I like to, I'm going to show you the plant and because it's early in the season, we're only in April here and the the marshmallow is really going to do well ah. in uh, the midsummer. So okay. we have to just admire her in the four inch pot right at the moment. <laughs> and the whole plant is useful. Every part of the plant can be used. The roots, the leaves, the flowers, even the little um, seed pods that are made, mm. which are round. They look kind of like a um, pinwheel a little. Oh, and sure. they have the seeds all stacked up inside. They're all so nice and tidy. And they look like a little cheese. Oh, how fun. So, actually called them cheeses and they were eaten as a food mm. sometimes they are called a famine food mm. but i finally realized that when they say famine food it was like they had come to a point in history where this which was everyday food mm -hmm. is not only used occasionally in case they need it right but for early times all of these plants were used on a daily basis. Okay. For the most part, the ones we're talking about in Herbs for Health, our mm -hmm. eight book series, these are plants that were incorporated into the lives of the people wherever they grew mm -hmm. as part of what made them succeed. That was the success of eating all these different kinds of plants, the diversity in the plants, the richness in the diet, because there was so many different foods eaten over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. and Seasons, different parts of the plants were used. Right. So, <clears throat> our diet is actually very. We think we have such good choice, but really, our diet is very limited. Mm -hmm. Limited to foods that have been hybridized and and made less and less strong, and require more and more outside resources to keep them going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I have these older plants in my garden. And we have, we call it a croft, but it's really a cottage garden. It's the cod, it's the garden right outside the house. Right. So I realized some time ago that if I was going to be successful as an elder, I would need to bring all my allies closer to home because uh -huh. it was harder to get out. Right. That's been true yet. But, but I do have in the garden here, and with just a four, four fifths of an acre, we should call it the fifth, just like four fifths of a quart is a fifth of whiskey or a fifth. Uh -huh. Alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're at the fifth, and um, and marshmallow is definitely one of the allies we have. She's right in the absolute center of our garden, mm. and I don't know if you can see this book. Yes. This right here has a really beautiful photograph oh. or a drawing of the marshmallow. Nice. Little, uh -huh. uh, light pink flowers, 
a soft herb. Even her leaves are soft. Right. Oh. So it's very soft. So because it's rich in mucilage, when I made the infusion of the root, um, I put this steeping last night, but I used cold water. Okay. Hot, hot water because the cold water pulls out the mucilage. It's the sticky stuff that um, that we want. And so by using the cold water, more of that comes into the solution. And that is root now, not like the little white parts are part of a, the flower? In here? Uh-huh. It's all root. It's all root. Okay. This is what it looks like. I just happen to have a little. Oh, okay. Before. All right. Yep. So you can see that this is the, the way it looks when it's in what we used to call cut and sifted. I don't see them calling things that way so much anymore. Mm -hmm. But this is how you would buy the root if you were buying it from okay. a, a, a herb a company. Okay. And so, so this is um, soothing to the whole alimentary canal, right all the way down. And what most people don't realize is that that tube that runs right through us all the way from our mouth to the other end hmm. is actually external. What do you mean? External. It is the same as the skin on the outside of your body. Uh -huh. That's what creates. So even though it's inside of us, because there's an opening to the outside on both ends, mm -hmm. it's, out, it's considered outside the body. How interesting. Okay. <laughs> yes. Learn something new. <laughs> Go through a cell wall barrier to get to the true internal part of the body. Mm -hmm. the, the nutrients have to move through that that barrier right. of the alimentary canal to get into the blood to get out to the all the other parts of the body mm -hmm. so anything that actually soothes the alimentary canal soothes and makes it more um, flexible softens the tissue mm -hmm. which is exactly what the marshmallow does mm -hmm. and because it's rich in starches that become sugars in the body, it actually is a really great nutritive, um, it's a source of nutrition for the intestinal flora. Hmm, okay. So we have a double whammy ally here. Right. You can take it, it tastes good. Again, it's got a sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of in its flavor, but it leans towards sweet. It's got that rich, slimy quality, but not so much that it's offensive. Mm -hmm, it's right. Just um, it's just you can mix it with other things if that is something you don't enjoy mm -hmm. but it's actually an amazing food and medicine for the whole body mm. yep. froze up on us ah. nope, not yet you're still frozen on us oh, reconnecting all right Oh, there you are. Are we reconnected now? Hi. All right. It reconnected yeah. us. There you go. Okay. Beautiful thing going on, reconnecting us. That's right. So that's what this does. It causes the body to have a stronger connection with itself and the natural biome that's outside and inside our bodies. What people are just discovering now is that we are more bacteria and fungi than we are ourselves. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. And so anything we can do that nourishes that bacteria and fungi internally and externally, we want to do it right. because those are your allies. That's your strongest immune response is the ability for the body to say, this is me, this is not me. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we've got all those little incredibly intelligent biota all over us and all within us working on our side and we're working with them uh -huh. really create a, an immune system that's in harmony with nature it's not offending or or aggressive it's just working with the natural condition of our human being hmm. and so so that's the marshmallow and you can use any part the root the flower the leaf <laughs> Freezing up on us. Skype, I think, is not having a good day today. 
Oh, there you are. I was saying Skype <laughs> Skype is not having a good day today. Oh. Not today. Busy. A lot of folks are talking to their friends and people. Exactly. Um, That's what's it, happening. Method. So we just have to go with it. That's right. So go now with the flow. We're, we're jumping to the tropics. Ah, okay. And we're going, we're making a tea out of another member of the Malvaceae family. This is a cousin um, to the marshmallow of the northern climate. Okay. Now in the more in the tropical, subtropical areas of the okay. world, we have hibiscus. Ah, okay. Yeah. So the hibiscus flower, if you go to Mexican restaurants, you've seen jamaica, right. yep. uh, uh, the waters, uh, the fresh waters. And so that's what this is. This is, um, I'm actually going to show you, because it's not all about, you know, it's a lot of time about fun, bringing right. things to our diet that actually are a lot of fun. So we're make, I'm making a little... My, my one of my favorite summer teas because it is getting warmer. So we have the infusion of hibiscus, mm -hmm. America. If you're speaking in Spanish, you can't <coughs> see what I'm doing. <clears throat> mm. I just put orange marmalade. Okay. Into a glass with ice. Okay. And a Rosemary. Bigger rosemary, okay. <clears throat> the marmalade you'll ever taste is orange peels diced up very small, pour honey over the top, mm. let it steep for a day or two. <clears throat> you have super marmalade. Look at the color. Oh, pretty, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. The table now is a whole new shade of red. Yeah. <laughs> so, so nice. So we have it. A great summer beverage that's going to bring all the same. It's going to cool the body. It's going to soothe the alimentary canal. Mm -hmm. It'll be so much fun to drink. You're going to want it every day when it's hot. Uh -huh. Really uh -huh. refreshes the body. It cools inflammation. Right. Oh, neat. It's beautiful, so, too. You <clears throat> can, on an everyday basis, in this way of, of bringing herbs to life. Yeah, isn't it fun? Yeah, it's nice, nice. It's really, really, it's beautiful, gorgeous to look at. Yes. Delicious drink, and you can make it. Um, where I live, there's a lot of um, tiendas, so there's a very easy access to Jamaica. But you can get hibiscus online, really simple. This is a very popular um, herb all the way around the world. Right. right. Yeah. Neat. So. So life is good, you know, yes, when you bring it is. to life and you understand how they can actually help your body be stronger and healthier, right. then right. actually it's a great adventure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a while I didn't want to learn any new herbs because it seemed like every time I learned a new herb I'd get hurt or I'd get sick because I'd have to figure out how to use that plant. Right. <laughs> I found out there's this whole other vein of herbalism that you can actually enjoy uh -huh. the plant. Get right. to know them as friends and use them on a regular everyday basis, which right. is like a big uh, pleasure quotient. Mm -hmm. And then when you need their cousins, the ones that really do are good allies when you need them, mm -hmm. you, you go to them because you've already made friends with the family. That makes a lot of sense. It's just a way of thinking, you know. And, and I like that connection, that, that sense that we're all connected. Yes, and so let us connect in ways that enrich and help each and every one of us to flourish, even the ra the, the world around us. Mm -hmm. So this is what plants have brought to me. This is what I've learned from plants. Mm -hmm. I really am just an emissary or their voice mm -hmm. so that can come to them in a way that uh, it's approach. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's all approach. How do we approach something in our daily living mm -hmm. uh, do we approach it in such a way that it wants to come closer or does it go away? Mm -hmm. And so about these things, I think, helps. Sipping on a really good glass of tea. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and slowing down. So let me ask you this question. Um, do you know if the herb marshmallow is, in fact, used with what we call marshmallows? Is there any connection at all? That you yeah, know there, of. Yes, there is there is a connection because the, the root all herbs that were medicinal herbs, once sugar became easily accessible, mm -hmm. then 
of course, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. Right. <laughs> so people actually would whip the infusion of the marshmallow root uh-huh. with um, maybe sometime egg white and oh, sugar. Okay, yes. It never got to be like jet puffed right. that we grew within right. our hot chocolate. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the candied um, angelica, candied marshmallow root, candied alicampain, these were all steps towards getting the herbs into people. Well, I have to I have to tell you something quickly on this year's a- April Fool's Day. Um, mm-hmm. I was watching the news and they did a little section. They never said April Fool's, but what they did is they went to one of the fields out where the tulips are grown um, oh, yeah. in Washington State. And yeah. they had taken a bunch of bushes and they put marshmallows on them. And they were doing a whole segment, a serious segment, on this guy was a marshmallow farmer, and this is how the marshmallows grow. And you can see the little marshmallows, they use the little ones, and here's the full grown. And they did it with a totally straight face, interviewing this farmer, and he went on and on. About, and I kept saying, when are you gonna say this is April Fool's? That's not how marshmallows are made. They never said that, and I thought, I wonder how many people believe that marshmallows grow on bushes because they did that. Yeah, for sure. And you know, if people see it on the screen, they think it's true. Gotta be true if it's on the television well, or the internet. That's right. It would be really a fun one to um, to see. I, yeah. yeah. Well, this anyway. is real fried marshmallow, Althea <laughs> officinalis, awesome. and the hibiscus. These two are really great plants to bring into your household cupboard and enjoy in your life on a regular basis. So great. And they need to go to your website, which is Eagle Song hyphen gardener.com if they want to learn more <laughs> and uh, I've also put on our on our uh, newspiritjournal.com page where this video is places that people can get herbs so that if they want to do mail order herbs um, they can do that so awesome great, great. thank you it's been a pleasure look forward to seeing you again soon thank absolutely. you absolutely you have a good one and we'll talk again soon bye now